25 year old Lucas Sin is the chef at Junza Kitchen, a fast casual Chinese restaurant in New York City. And his side project is a series of experimental pop up dinners where he and his team are doing some really exciting things. What are your credentials? Um, <laughs> my credentials. <laughs> I have near no, I have close to no credentials. Still trying to figure out what in the world I'm doing. I opened my first restaurant in Hong Kong when I was 16. How about that? That's pretty special. It is. Uh, it was quite fun. It was really silly. Uh, we took ourselves way too seriously. What possessed you when you were 16? When I was 16, I was not opening restaurants. Uh, the question was why not, and I haven't really stopped opening restaurants or working in restaurants since. We did a couple of pop-ups in college in my dorm. You know, in noodle pop-ups, we did tasting menus, we did uh, family style, uh, we did Portuguese food. There was nothing else to do, it felt, felt like, on weekends but to open restaurants. So we did so. <laughs> uh, and that, <laughs> that sort of energy compels us today to do the chef tables that we do here at Jones Kitchen. Who comes to your chef tables? People that want to know more about Chinese food. I saw people who were Chinese, who were not Chinese. Yeah. Many of them were young when I was yeah, there, but sure. I'm sure you get all ages. Yeah. There's a new one each month, right? There's a new one each month. And each one is multi-course, extremely intricate. How do you begin the process? Uh, usually you come up with an idea that you believe is worth investigating. Sometimes it's a cultural idea. We've looked at food as it relates to Chinese medicine. We've looked at foods that are colored red in the Chinese canon. But vinegar, vinegar is exciting. Why is vinegar exciting? because uh, vinegar has the pretty unique ability to bring out other flavors and other foods. This month we had the privilege of working with Michael Harlan Turkel, who wrote the book Acid Trip. In my opinion, probably one of the best books on vinegar. And you bring different chefs in each time, right? Different chefs each time. The format is always Chinese X something else. In this case, X is vinegar. So we just see where the, what the confluence of Chinese cuisine and vinegar is. Um, and we start looking at uh, examples. In this case, because it was so technique forward, we're looking at preservation and we're looking at uh, 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 protein coagulation. What is something that people might find surprising about the chef's table experience? Restaurants open for service while we do chef's table. That's what's fun. So half the restaurant is all fast casual half and then... People, yeah, the other half are eating off of China and getting lectured to by a 25 year old. <laughs> and how do you put together your, your lectures? We read a lot, we think about it, we ask questions, we call everyone. I call about 15 different people about sweet and sour pork to get a good understanding of the fried batter. You do your research, you ask your questions, and you try to come up with a solution in the form of a dish. The flavors and the textures and the temperatures and the way you cook things need to tell a story. Why do you find food to be the best vehicle for storytelling? Food is the first step for understanding culture. If you can tell interesting stories about the food, people might be more interested to find out more about the culture. One of my favorite things about doing Chef's Table is tackling dishes like egg drop soup that you don't think about, but use specific techniques to tell a more complicated story. You might get egg drop soup, you might get like chunks of egg that add to the umami flavor of the soup, but what really the egg drop soup is meant for is for eggs to mimic the texture of the soup that's boiled down and thickened. And that egg drop itself can only be achieved if you have acidity. Nanbanzuke was a cross between a Chinese and a Japanese dish. Hard seared blue fish sits in a snail vinegar that's been aged for eight years, made out of snails. It didn't have snail flavor to me, it but is, it was yeah. delicious. What's your favorite part of the whole process? Sometimes you serve people food and you tell them why you cook the dish in that specific way. And you get a little bit of a, hmm. After you go like, hmm. <laughs> and that's your favorite part. Good enough. People give you that mm -hmm face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once in a while, you have people tell you that you're wrong, or tell you that there, there are more interesting things to think about, or they like add to that dialogue. What do you think are some of the great misconceptions about Chinese food? The primary understanding of Chinese food is that it's quite singular. That's always based off of uh, sugar, MSG, cornstarch. Um, and that everything is deep fried, stir fried. When I was living in China, I was completely blown away by the yeah. regional cuisines and how they are so disparate that you couldn't even recognize them as Chinese if you grew up eating the Chinese food that I grew up eating. Yeah. What do you want people to walk away with? The Chinese food is pretty interesting. Chinese food is a good starting point. Start thinking about you know, cross-cultural connections.